I'm Debbie. And I'm Allison. And we're the Polter Gals. Spooky. <laughs> I'm Allison. And I'm Debbie. And we're the, the Poulter Gals. Gals. On this week's episode, we're going to be doing the Lizzie Borden House mm. in Fall River, Massachusetts. Mm. I wonder why we're doing the Lizzie Borden case. Is it because last week we did the Alaska House? Like, wow. what, what, what puts these two things in common, Allison? Axes. Axes? You better kiss your axe, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's just some murders. Just, just some, axe murders. Just some just some murders. So we're trying to go on a theme, if you guys haven't noticed. Um, but yeah, we're back at it. This one's an Allison-centric episode. Are you excited? Allison, like, read a book for this. Yes. In fact, I only got halfway through because uh, so too much, much, too much information. <laughs> Not enough time for an episode. Yep. So, but this would call for a second, like a part two, if yeah. y'all like it enough. Yeah. So. Comment. Let us know. Yeah. Do you guys like Lizzie Borden? What's your thoughts, feelings, emotions? Um, and I guess we'll get to more of it um, as we get into it. I already know my thoughts, feelings, emotions. <laughs> Allison, big mad. <laughs> <laughs> I real big mad. All right. Well, let's get started. So, we're going to kind of start in a weird little middle and kind of spot. So, on August 4th of 1892, Andrew and Abby Borden were found murdered in their home. Daughter Lizzie Borden was arrested and tried for the axe murders, but she was acquitted in 1893 and continued to live in the Fall River area until her death on June 1st, 1927. And the case was never solved. Dun, dun, dun. So, like I said, kind of weird ending. Yeah. Like, we're, that's what came across this case. It's so, also a cold case. Yes. So, time to go back to find out what led up to this weird little situation. Ending. Yeah. Yeah. So, Lizzie Borden, also her full name was Lindsay, or Lizzie Andrew Borden. Mm. So at the time, because Andrew Borden never had any sons, wanted his name to be carried on. Aww. So named Lizzie, Lizzie Andrew Borden. She was born in ni- er, 1860 in Fall River to Sarah and Andrew Borden. Soon after the birth of Lizzie, Sarah died. Oh. And like I said, Lizzie carried her father's name, and it's also the reason why she was the favored sister. Mm-hmm. So she had one older sister mm-hmm. named Emma. Emma was old enough to know their mother and all this other stuff, which led up to a lot of the problems Ooh. between Andrew and his new wife, Abby, who he actually remarried. To, or married to two years after Sarah died. Oh. So it was a pretty quick. So it quick was just her stepmom. Yes. So it was a oh. pretty quick turnaround, and it was their stepmom. So Andrew was actually successful enough in the fields of manufacturing and real estate. Mm-hmm. He made the most money in those two fields, but had, well, he ha- he was a multi-hat person. He was a, a man of multi-hats. Yes. Multi-hat person. But that's where he made most of his money. He made more than a a quarter of a million. Wow. Which obviously supported his wife, his two daughters, Emma and Lizzie, and even employed a servant by the name of Bridget Sullivan, along with an occasional house guest, which I believe was Abby's brother or brother-in-law. Interesting. Or I, I forget exactly. It was one of those or Andrew's former Mm brother-in-law from his first marriage. But that's besides the point. (laughs) Both Emma and Lizzie lived with their father and stepmother into adulthood. It is said that in this time, women that typically got married in their early 20s 
both Emma and Lizzie were in their 30s with no hope of getting married. They were old spinsters. Yes. Thus living with their parents forever. forever. <laughs> Lizzie is thought to be the favorite of Andrew, so much so that he never wore a ring when he remarried. Mm. But Lizzie gave him a ring, and he wore it to the day he died. That's so cute. And he wore it on the finger that would have been your wedding. Yeah, wedding Aww. ring, just to show that he loved her for eternal, Aww. like eternity. That's so sweet. Yes. So, and one of the reasons that Andrew got remarried because it is thought that Andrew needed a housekeeper and a mother for his daughters. It is also said that Abby's feelings for Andrew were never officially recorded, which is part of the reason why, like I said, he remarried to Abby. Hmm, interesting. The relationship between the Borden sisters and their stepmother, Abby, was not close. They originally, Emma greeted Abby as Mrs. Borden, and she was worried that Abby sought out the game to gain access to their father's money. Oh, so this is like a Cinderella situation. Yes. Yes. Don't you just love trains? Train. But Lizzie did, because she was too young to really remember their mother, called Abby mother. And Emma felt like she was more of the uh, protector Mm-hmm. The older sibling. The, the older charge, sibling. Yeah. Yeah. And got her out of that habit of calling her mother. She was like, um, she's not your mama. Yes. Wow. So the two sisters helped to manage the rental properties that Andrew owned. I put right now I have down the family attended the Congregationalist Church, hmm. an institution in which Liz, Lizzie was particularly involved with. But after doing a little bit more research, Emma and Lizzie actually attended this church because of how much they hated Abby. (laughs) So Abby and Andrew attended one church, and Lizzie and Emma Mm. attended another, which is this church, because they did not like her. Unless they're doing everything on the spite. They really need it. Yes, yes. And it's insane of the amount of, like, examples that point to how much they hated Abby. Wow. Then I read it was the trial of Lizzie Borden and this book gives you so many examples of why they hated Abby so much. And it's like it's like yikes. So another example is they also never ate at the same time of their parents to show their disapproval of Abby. <laughs> so Abby and Andrew would eat at the dinner table. Uh-huh. And then sh- like they would the sisters would wait until they finished their meal, mm-hmm. and then they would go eat. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And they were jealous of anything Andrew bought for Abby and thought they deserved the same. For example, he bought Abby's sister's property because they fe- her sister fell in some financial difficulties. Mm-hmm. The sitter- sisters felt like they deserved their own house, so he bought them their own property each. Oh, I wish my daddy would do that for yeah. me. Yeah. And it wasn't, like, it wasn't that he was just doing it just to, you know, favor Abby. He yeah. was doing it to be nice and because her sister had some financial difficulties. Yeah. But, no, they were so jealous that they felt like they deserved. I mean, they were also grown women, so, like. Yes. <laughs> yes, and it's like, dude, y'all are freaking 30 and y'all are riding on daddy's pocket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you're literally riding on your dad's pocket money. Yeah, basically. And you're 30. Hey, man, they were spinsters back in the day. You like, didn't get a man. Cause Jesus. Your dad had a sports. Why do you think they were always trying to pawn them off on any man? Well, the thing is, is that, like, just like last week mm-hmm. with the, what is it, Josiah mm-hmm. and his household, like, Andrew and his household was very much thought of this very involved like affluent family. Yeah. Yes, very, you know, could do no wrong kind a of part house. of the church, yeah. like always doing good things for the community. Yeah. Like So it's that it's that same concept with this family. Mhm. But I also read that pretty early on in the book they say that any problems that the family had 
they did not talk about yeah out in public. I don't think you did back then. No, and it's just like it was it was very much that picture perfect kind of family. Yeah, but it is thought that this was the darkest murder in history. Mm-hmm. On the morning of August fourth, eighteen ninety two, Andrew and Abby were murdered and mutilated in their Fall River home, which, by the way, was not their original home. No. Oh. They had moved from that, from basically a farmhouse mm-hmm. to this house. This house was uh, was originally, it's two, it was two stories, mm-hmm. but it was meant for two individual families. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So it was like an upstairs or a downstairs. Yeah, so it's kind of like an... Like a, a like, duplex. <laughs> yeah. It's like a duplex rather than side by side, it's on top of each yeah. other. That's kind of how my parents' farmhouse is. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what this house was set up and when andrew bought it he that's when he did the renovations and to what it looks like now Mm -hmm. which is now known as the lizzie borden house yes so it's this is where it gets really confusing because you start to see a lot of inconsistencies in lizzie's story so The first version is their neighbor noticed that Lizzie was standing in the screen door, just standing there. She asked Lizzie, what's wrong? She says, oh, my parents died. They're dead. Ugh, that gave me goosebumps. But she did nothing report, like, she did not report it until she was asked. So, like, she just, like was standing there and someone else saw her yeah she was just basically standing there and the neighbor saw and asked her and that's when she said something about it well maybe she was in shock you know people grieve differently and what another story that they she said was she alerted the maid bridget Mm -hmm. uh to her father's dead body he had been attacked and killed while sleeping on the sofa A search of the home led to the discovery of the body of Abby Borden in the upstairs guest bedroom. Like her husband, Abby was a victim of a brutal hatchet attack. Oh, gosh. Abby received 17 blows total in the head and was facing her murderer, believed to have been killed between 9 and 11 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Andrew was killed close to 11 after a trip from work unaware that his fam- or his wife was murdered and never waking up he took about 10 to 11 blows to the head oh my goodness so those so, were like intense yes and another weird inconsistency is they also said that abby's body was actually facing away from the murder from the murder but she turned because she heard a noise but they could tell that she, most of her body was away. Policemen were called to the scene, suspected Lizzie immediately, although she was not taken into custody at the time. Her sister was out of town at the time and was never a suspect. During the week between the murders and her arrest, Lizzie burned a dress that she claimed was stained with paint. Mm. paint. Prosecutors would also later allege that the dress was stained with blood and that Lizzie had burned the dress in order to co- cover up her crime. So once again, more inconsistencies because what had happened was what they said was the neighbor went over with her sister okay. and checked the house. Okay. She refused to go any higher than eye level, just enough for her to see over the second set of stairs. Oof. And it is her that discovered the body. Huh, interesting. Lizzie, so their neighbors, actually, there's three doctors that live wow. around the house. Well, that's good. <laughs> she went to one. Hmm. And he was busy at the time. He, she's like, hi, yes, um, there are literally people dead over here. Can you come look? And he's like, mm, I'm busy. But, yeah, instead of going mm-hmm. to the other two doctors... She just didn't do anything. She didn't do anything. Hmm. And so that's kind of like the weird thing, was that it wasn't really thought of. 
Mm-hmm. Also, Lizzie. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but Lizzie was had claimed that she was on her period. Mm. And that's why there the, would have been blood. Th- that's why there would have been blood. But Bridget, the housemaid, had said that she had never noticed that there was a bucket filled with bloody clothes until the day of the murder. Mm. So that's it's just a bucket of bloody coat clothes yeah. over there. Don't worry about it. So the news of the murder had spread throughout the world in the matter of days. Many people in the Fall River uh area believed that it was actually Jack the Ripper, mm. which happened to be during the same time period. But that was in London. Yes. But in London, I did read up a little bit on him. and well, We should do that, a whole episode on Jack the Ripper. Yes. So that one, again, cold case, but mm. it's thought of that he fled the country and came to America, mm. and that's why... Some people will say that. Some people say that. Interesting. Yeah. By the time Andrew had returned home, Abby had, was already dead. Bridget struggled to up, open the door to let Andrew in, uttered something under her breath, and heard Lizzie laugh and was seen coming from the opposite room that Abby was killed in. While on trial, Lizzie had told multiple stories that contradic- contradicted each other. Mm-hmm. The biggest question was, how did the killer get past both Bridget and Lizzie to go down and murder to kill them? This was asked because how did the killer remain unseen for an Mm. hour and a half between the kills? I was going to say, because Abby was killed first and then Andrew was killed downstairs. Yes, and it was said that the kills were about an hour, hour and a half, two hours max between. Mm. Okay. So, again... Super, super, like, contradicting. Bridget had told police that she had heard Lizzie say that Abby had gone to visit her sister, but had come home early. And when asked about who carried this letter to as to why Abby got invited, there was no trace of any letter. So it didn't actually exist. Yes. Well, theoretically. Theoretically. One story was that she was out in the. Uh, one story said that Lizzie was out in the barn, mm-hmm. making a sinker for her fish line. Yeah, I think this is the story I know the most. Yes, like her being out in the barn. Yes. The other with that she had told police was that she was upstairs when her father got home and went downstairs to greet him. Another was that she was downstairs but never heard him walk in. Mm. This inconsistency had brought suspicion. She also could not clearly state where everybody's whereabouts were, although Bridget could count could account for everybody in mm-hmm. the house. So Bridget was like, no, here's the facts. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to tell you what's up, and Lizzie, you go over there and make up your make-believe stories. Yeah. And we're back. And we're back. You missed it. I sing him a little song. Oh, how lovely. So you gotta listen to that while you're <laughs> <laughs> while you're editing. <laughs> oh, fun. Uh so one of the, the other major stories, like I said, was that she was on her period for a few days before. And obviously with the servant it's Bridge's responsibility to change to the sheets and clean the change clothes. the clothes, all that other stuff. And Bridget didn't see the pill until the day of. What was strange was that Lizzie was seen standing in the door doorway by a neighbor, which was odd. And this is when Lizzie notified someone that her parents had been killed. Bridget, again, the only one that has been known to account for everybody's whereabouts, Mm -hmm. was in the backyard washing the windows. Let's just say that the trial lasts a while, so I'm going to have to speed this up. Yeah. Um, Anyway, (laughs) yeah, too much. Too much. Like I said, too much. So Lizzie was indicted. 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 (laughs) Indicted. I don't know why I try to add too many syllables. Yeah, I think you just, like, add syllables to words. It ought to be our our word of the week, our crime word of the week. (laughs) Yikes. Our crime scenario. Indicted. <laughs> That's <laughs> on December 2nd of 1892. 
Her widely publicized trial began the following June in New Bedford. So they had the preliminary hearing Mm -hmm. in Fall River Mm -hmm. and was then passed up to the Supreme Court because they were undetermined as far as the court. Mm -hmm. And they felt like this should have been passed up anyway. But they also said that any evidence that was given could not be fully used as evidence. Mm, Like it couldn't be fully substantiated or whatever. So they had to find more evidence to back that evidence up. In other words. Interesting. So that was kind of the weird thing about this. Lizzie did not take the stand in her own defense. And in her inquisite testimony was not admitted into evidence. The testimony provided by others proved inconclusive. And on June 20th, 1893, Lizzie was acquitted of the murders. No one else was charged with the crimes, and she continued to live in Fall River until her death. Wow. Uh, Which is kind of insane because it is said that she actually, the day before the murders, Mm -hmm. had gone into a local pharmacy Mm -hmm. requesting for... Some kind of, like, acid, Mm. which is, like, a poison that is uh, colorless, odorless, tasteless, everything. I think I've heard this before. Everyone had gotten sick except for, well, I say except for Lizzie and Bridget got sick, but not as severe as Andrew and and Abby. Abby. Mm. And they ate dinners at different times. Yes. Maybe their food was poisoned. Yes. And so that's kind of where the a lot of it came up. Mm. And it, it was just a, one of those weird things. Uh, Lizzie and Emma actually inherited a significant portion of their father's estate, which allowed them to purchase a new home together. The Borden sisters lived together for the following decade. Although free, Lizzie was considered guilty by many of her neighbors and thus never enjoying acceptance in the community following her trial. Her reputation was further tarnished when she was accused of shoplifting in 1897. Oh my gosh. Which is not the first time either due to the fact that while living with her parents while they were still alive in the Mm -hmm. house, the house was broken into, but there is no sign of forced entry. Mm -hmm. The only way that the burglar could have entered the house was through Lizzie's Lizzie's room. (laughs) Great. After this incident, Andrew actually required all doors and windows to be locked, and the only key to the house was to remain on the the coffee table in the living room, making the murders even more suspicious and making it point even more to Lizzie, Mm. since, once again, the only other person in the house except for her was Bridget, who was in the back washing the windows. Okay, but what about Emma? Emma was out of town. Oh. She was pretty, like, known for going to visit her friends Mm -hmm. out of town. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so she was gone for two weeks at a time. Okay. So So she couldn't have done it. Interesting. And it was, like, one of those things that Andrew required. You take the key. You unlock the door that you need. You put the key back. Yeah. So... Again, the only way that you could, anybody could have entered the house was if they had the key. If they had the key, hmm. which if Bridget was out reading or washing the windows, mm-hmm. the only other way in would have been for Andrew to come in through the front door. But he has to be let in hmm. because there would already have been someone yeah. in the house, so someone would have had to. Yes. So Abby was upstairs sleeping. So, it was still, like, morning, right? So, there are a few different stories. Abby had left to go visit her sister and ended up coming back early Mm -hmm. is one of the stories that Lizzie told. Mm -hmm. Another story that Lizzie told was that she was getting, Abby was getting the guest bedroom, which is the room that she died in, ready for a house guest. Mm, Interesting. And thus her dying in there. And that's why it's, like, it's a bunch of, like, mistold, inconsistent 
stories. Stories, it's just half stories. And or again, like, that okay. have been told over hundreds of years. Yeah. Hundred years. Yeah, so there's really no, like, true evidence behind it. Mm-hmm. But what makes it so interesting is that another story that Lizzie had told was that she told Bridget to go get something, like, from the market. To leave. To leave the house. Which would have meant Lizzie and Abby in the house alone. Interesting. So that's kind of, like, where it gets super confusing. Yeah. And they, so during the trial, they even got this super, like, this really, really good lawyer. Mm -hmm. And she would basically beat around the bush. Anytime he'd asked a question, she'd beat around the bush. Or... I don't know how to an- I don't know how to answer that. I don't know what you're asking me. I don't know. This and that. Like it was a bunch of like like she realized that she was contradicting herself with some of these answers. So then she'd circle back to try to fill in that gap to bridge the two stories. Hmm, interesting. So it was it was really really weird. So it, it, yeah, it got confusing trying to read it and <laughs> trying to keep up with the whole story. But what made it even weird was that in 1905, Emma abruptly moved out of the house that she shared with her sister, and the two never spoke again. It said that Emma may have been uncomfortable with Lizzie's close relationship with another woman, Nancy O'Neill. Although her silence on the issue has fueled speculation that she learned new details about the murders of her father and stepmother. No member of the household staff ever offered additional information on the rift, even following Lizzie's death. Wow. Lizzie ended up dying of pneumonia in Fall River on June 1st of 1927. Emma died days later in Newmarket, New Hampshire. Whoa. I got goosebumps again. Yeah. They died just days after each other? Yeah. That's crazy. And it is also said that supposedly the board... The Borden parents are not the only ones who died here. Two siblings were supposedly murdered here by their mother. Then she slit her own throat. Wow. In the same house? In the same house. Oh, my goodness. So it is thought that their forces have been caused by demonic spirits. Interesting. And that's maybe why Lizzie killed her dad and her stepmom. And she might have been possessed. Yeah, and didn't remember the capital P. Yeah, so mm. so that's probably where some of the inconsistencies came from, was because she r- remembered bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. But might have been might have actually done it, but and she might have remembered going to the barn, come back. Mm-hmm. She might have remembered being downstairs. She mm. might like, but it, it it was weird. Uh, and to this day, the boarding house serves as a bed and breakfast, which does offer tours, mm-hmm. and. So the people that lived there before Andrew and Abby was his uncle and his wife went insane, threw her three kids in the well and then slit her throat. So another Wait, so Andrew's parents so, yes. this happened to? So Andrew's uncle. Andrew's uncle. So it's like in the family. Yes. And and this is that same kind of like They think it's due to yeah. th- the property being haunted. And again, or, it's two different stories. Killed her own kids, slit her own throat. Oh my gosh. Um so it's weird. And then the day before Andrew and Abby, Lizzie was seen getting poison from the pharmacy. Mm-hmm. And that was actually ta- taken into account because there's two employees. Mm-hmm. There's one working the counter and then essentially the like manager. Mm-hmm. And the manager's the one that told the employee, that's Lizzie Borden. Whoa. And so... The employee just knew, and he addressed her as Mrs. Borden. Interesting. So he knew, like, who, where she belonged. Yeah. But couldn't remember which sister it was. Hmm. So there is evidence that they knew who she was. Yeah. And all that other stuff. And so if she was there asking, it's kind of like, uh. Yeah. And that's, again, inconsistencies in the story. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of... S- like crazy quotes that point to Lizzie and but no actual hmm. substantial evidence 
Interesting. And back then they didn't have like DNA testing or yeah. like finger. I mean, I get maybe they didn't yeah. get hands, but even then, like yeah. very rudimentary. Like, let me look at this with a magnifying glass type stuff. Yeah, and it, it, it's it gets pretty crazy to think about when you start to read. And again, the book was The Trial of Lizzie Borden. Trial of Lizzie Borden. So Go check it out. That it, it gets crazy as far as how that happened Mm -hmm. but there are also there are some movies it's uh lizzie's life and trial have been uh decepted the legend of lizzie borden which is in 1975 lizzie borden took an axe in 2014 and then the newest movie lizzie which was made in 2018 wow and then of course ghost adventures i love them season seven episode five wow for those but yeah it gets insane. And now, it's time to get into the hauntings. hauntings. Do you want to take a break? Or are you good? Oh, we're good. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Am I supposed to cover the hauntings? I covered both last time. You want me to do it? Okay. I don't know. Should I you got do you. It? I, I got it? you. No, like, no, I got should you. Should we do it because no, it's like no. our episode? No, no, I got you. Okay, okay, okay. So, this was named number two on a list of top ten best haunted hotels or B&Bs in the world. The bed and breakfast is at 232 2nd Street, is known for doors opening and closing on their own, coupled with mysterious floral scents that some say are signs of the Borden spirits. You know how we feel about those olfactory scents. It's the strongest sense in after death. Strongest sense to sense death? Is it? It's the sense of sensing death. (laughs) Yikes. 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 Uh. So it's the sign to, of the Borden spirits. And according to the article, a article recently posted on British company Unswitch. So that's, yeah. That's I don't really know. I'm sure. I'm just kind of here. <laughs> uh, Lizzie Borden's legend. Here's why Fall River's most infamous story will never die. The article looked at 75 hotels worldwide alleged to be haunted based on reports from travel publications like CN Traveler and Travel and Leisure. They took into account price, overall TripAdvisor ratings, and guest reviews containing spooky related words like haunted, creepy, ghost, and much more. Mm. The result? The Lizzie Borden House earned a 9.73 out of 10 on the spooky scale. <gasps> I love a spooky scale. Yes. We need to start having a spooky scale. <laughs> I like we'll that. rank our, ep- our episodes by spookiness. Yikes. <laughs> that was like so a, cool. such a weird yawn. <laughs> um, so on the spooky scale, enough to nearly take the top spot worldwide. Wow. It was narrowly missed out on the number one spot taken by the Mass Ms. Paw Hotel mm. in Nevada. A little bit over 200 miles outside of Las Vegas. This is a, like, luxury hotel that local legend says it haunts, is haunted by a lady in red. And maybe we'll talk about it in a future episode. Because it's a lady in red. Definitely not a lady in white. We can never talk about women in white. I love a woman in red. Me gusta. (laughs) (laughs) So, believers in the paranormal claim that the house is haunted by everyone from Andrew and Abby to the ghosts of the children murdered by their mother at the house next door in 1848, to even Lizzie her t- herself on a part-time basis. <laughs> Apparently, since people claim Lizzie also haunts uh, Maple Croft, her post-trial house on French Street. Interesting. So, like I said, this w- the house that sh- the murders happened was not the original house. house. Yeah. So, the Lizzie Borden house was featured on Travel's channel Ghost Adventures in 2012. Mm-hmm. An episode featured a tour guide claiming that the ghost of Andrew Borden punched her in the back. What? Some people claim to have heard noises, creaking, or footsteps, children's laughter, and even seen a ghostly face appearing on the wall in the basement. That's scary. Many other people, including other former tour guides, have spent time in the house without incident. One review was left stating stating that leaving money in y- your drawer will let the spirits leave you alone. Hmm. So they're just paying them off? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's how you know he was a crotchety old man. He just wants money. Uh, all right. I mean. But the basement had experiences such as scratching, pushing, as well as footsteps coming from behind them. Hmm. There's also been a claim that at the time of the murders, an attempt to use it as evidence, a psychic medium went to walk the house <gasps> and communicated with Andrew, uh-huh. but he refused to give the name <gasps> of the murder. And is it because he loved Lizzie? And he it's was not going to give her. It up. was yeah, <gasps> basically because they refuse. They think that he was refusing to give her up. Oh, because he still loved her, even because though she killed him. Yeah. A story. Yeah. Yikes. Man, it's time for some afternoon yawns already. I know. So, s- shadow people have been seen, especially on the staircase going down to the main hallway and walking into other parts of the house. Owners of the home have seen shadow people move around different parts of the house. Sometimes the staff and guests can feel someone brush up against them on the stairs mm. in various parts of the home. A shadow of a woman in an apparition that looks like Lizzie has been seen down in the basement by all the owners. The staff and the guests can also claim this. Interesting. Of course, you have the disembodied voices, um, cold spots, and like she's felt like a finger touch her back, and when she turns around, there's nothing. Uh, current and former owners have reported hearing doors on the second and third floors opening and closing, followed by thir- uh, footsteps. The entity of Lizzie Borden. Uh, there's an apparition of a woman that looks like Lizzie has been seen down in the basement, looking around the basement, perhaps being sure that she disposed of all the evidence. Hmm. And then there's the entity of Bridget. She is still trying to say what happened, the truth. An Hmm. EVP recording that was captured by Diagostino? Sure. Sure. Uh, Horrified scream saying, ma'am, come quick. Did she find the body of An- Abby, Andrew, or both? Cold spots are reported in Maggie's room, and an apparition of a woman in a, dre- in a dress, like much like a maid's clothes, is seen doing her choice- chores around the house. So it could be Bridget. Yes. And then the entity of Abby. In the guest bedroom, now called the John Morris room, mm-hmm. in Indic indication of a body on the room's bed was discovered by a staff member like someone had just laid on top of it one month after renovations and refurnished the house had been complete Hmm. there have been cries heard uh, in this room as well an elder woman with gray hair has been seen happily putting around the home busy with her affairs if she could enjoy life and it's also said that um oh let me let me got not get too far but it seems the spirits are becoming more communicative because of the encouragement of the owners and the living and all the attention being drawn to the horrible day in August that had happened wow so I mean, and you know they feed off people's energy. Yes. So the more like tourists show up, and the more people they're gonna they're gonna just, yes they're gonna and steal that energy. It said that like a lot of spirits know, like the whole suicide force. Like they know yeah. what kind of energy you're bringing. The curious, the mm-hmm. you're just there just to be there, sh- stuff like that. So it's that same thing. Yeah, there have been photos of misty human forms taken in the living room where Andrew was attacked. And then EVPs of entities of Lizzie and Bridget were caught on digital recorders. Hmm. On an episode of Ghost Lab, the investigation got an interesting EVP. When asked the question, did Lizzie kill you for your money? A male voice answered, you got that right. <laughs> so oh, wow. Yes. And the YouTube video that looks like the apparition of Andrew Borden is pointed out in a crime scene photo located on the far left looking at his body. So, That's kind of scary. And it is also said that if you were to go up into the guest room and ask, because again, Abby was 
is thought to be the only person to have seen her killer. Mm-hmm. If you ask her who killed you, she will say Lizzie. <gasps> Got goosebumps again. So, All the hair on my arm are yes. standing up. Look at that. So she says Lizzie. Oh. But again, she got acquitted. Mm. So there's no actual truth. But it, yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. This whole thing is crazy. And trying to even find how the stories line up is hard. And it's confusing because it makes your brain just yikes. Click, yeah. Click, click. <laughs> but the fact that Andrew refused. To answer the medium when the mm. medium went in to question him in hopes to use it as evidence against Lizzie, he refused to give it up. But even to this day, no, Abby says... It. Abby will say it's Lizzie. Abby says it's Lizzie. Huh. Interesting. And all the evidence points to Lizzie. Hmm. The more you know. So. Well. No, I'm yawning. You made me yawn. I made you yawn again. <laughs> How are you? Well, that's the end of this uh, true crime case, um, our hauntingly true crime um, uh, for the Poltergals. Thank you guys for listening. This is episode number two um, yep. of our hauntingly true crime series. Um, we're kind of going with the theme. So as you notice, we did two axe murderers who had two cold cases um, in houses. So keep an eye out. Um, and next week episode, we'll be back with another Debbie centric episode. Um, I've been doing research. Um, I'm not going to spoil it on what we're doing, but keep an eye out. Um, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media. Don't forget to follow us on our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash polter pals. P A L S. That's us. And we're the gals, the G A L S. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Did you get my text, though? No, what'd you say? About the... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I yeah. added it. Oh, shit. A lot of it's just, like, sad stuff. I know. And, I like, I didn't realize... Is it... Okay, so I didn't realize that that was a house until, like, later in the episode. You've been listening to The Polter Gals, a Rogue Media Network podcast. This has been a Rogue Media podcast.